We are on Amelia Island. And we're camping at Fort Clinch State Park. So we're heading over to Fort Clinch State Park today. Biking, hiking, check out the beach, the fort. We're gonna get a special tour of the bakery. You get an inside look. <laughs> Welcome back. If you're finding us for the first time, we're Paul and Sarah, and we love sharing the beauty around us. In this episode, we're headed to Amelia Island to the city of Fernandina Beach, so we can share one of our favorite state parks. And we can't wait to show you the fort. So let's go. So we're heading over to Fort Clinch State Park today. Biking, hiking, check out the beach, the fort. But before we get there, we wanted to check out Fernandina Beach because it is so cute. Also, they have a farmer's market going on right now, Saturdays from nine to one. Also, we've done it many times before where we've stayed in the campground and we've rode our bikes all the way into downtown. It's five miles of a bike ride one way. It's also a really long stretch sometimes with the heat. So we just went ahead and took the van right to close to downtown. I gotta get these bikes put together. Hopefully uh, the van will be okay here in this park. All right, we gotta get going. It's starting to get late. We parked the Saturday van at Central Park, just a few blocks from the farmer's market in downtown Fernandina. The little downtown is adorable, and it's an easy, very scenic bike ride. It is a good thing we're riding the bicycles in and not trying to park the van. We would never find a space. I think that was only three blocks from the park. All right, you ready to get some veggies and see what they got? <laughs> Some veggies. I see blueberries and strawberries. Thank you. But they're organic too. I think we got what we came for, so we are out of here. You don't see that every day. Oh, good. The van's still there. Hmm, what do you think? Oh, they're really good. A little sweet. Ooh, like your shirt. Hmm. <laughs> This is a very long line. The campsite's not ready, but we can go in and just enjoy the park. There are these ancient sand dunes and they're huge. I really want to do some hiking. Yeah, I think so. There are two different trails that take off right from this little parking lot that they have. But first, ooh, lunch. So fancy. Bon appetit. Alligator warnings all over the place on this pond trail. We are in Florida. So the first trail that we're doing is Willow Pond. You can't bring bicycles, which is kind of nice. So then you don't have to worry about bicyclists coming up on you really quick. And the reason we're doing this one is pretty much because our neighbors said there was a big, big alligator over here. So of course we had to go see it. <laughs> and then after we finish this trail, we're gonna do an even longer trail that is kind of like the highlight that everyone comes here for. Oh yeah, I see the water. Definitely alligator infested water is there. Mm. Oh boy. Mm. Yikes. Don't stand around here too long. Maybe keep walking. Seriously, no wonder there was an alligator sign. Oh, I think oh. I see the alligator out in the water. Do you see it? Yeah. Oh, crap. Oh, my God. That means while we had lunch, he was probably sitting right here. Right in front of us is his little path. I'm sure that's where he comes. And he's just now swimming away. That was really cool. I think we might want to get out of here. We really did say it came back oh. up. That's it, we're going. That's as close as I want to get to a gator. Didn't we see kids coming off of this trail? And also surprisingly, people with dogs. Oh. I would never want to walk my dog right next to where alligators are. That's actually pretty dangerous. Quick potty break later, we're at our next trail. If you go the whole way, it's going to be five miles of a loop. 
this is like one of our favorite trails. So the key feature to this trail is that it's also a bicycle trail. That means if you're walking it, you have to be careful. People might be coming up fast behind you, but they're usually pretty good about calling it out or ringing a bell or something. The other thing is that this trail has a lot of hills. So the hiking actually gives you some elevation, which is great. I'm already feeling the burning in my legs because as a Floridian, as you know, we don't get a lot of hills. Oh gosh, here comes another one. There's a big old woodpecker up there, like really big. Now this is what we're talking about. This is awesome. Steep dip. Don't fall. <laughs> it's a deer. That deer was not scared at all. I can't believe I was just saying about the time we saw a deer and then we see a deer. I'm, I'm not even kidding. The trail comes right out at the Ford parking lot. Which we're probably going to do tomorrow. Look at the size of those dunes in relation to Sarah. There's big trees growing right on the top of these sand dunes, so they've been there a long time. We're gonna head to the check-in and get our camping spot. Brown checked in. And there's still a line. It probably also has to do with the fort having some sort of event today. So, plus it's a beautiful day. So people are enjoying the beach, people are enjoying the fort. I'm so excited. Finally, we can check into our campsite in the River Loop. So what do you think? Perfect, we're home. Welcome to the Site is Right. Come on down. So we have electricity here. We also have water. We actually don't need to use either one of those. Wow. Handy dandy clothesline. Ooh. Our fire ring and our picnic table. Come here. We have caterpillars. And we know this guy, if you touch it, they will sting you like crazy. At Gilcrest Blue, they were just covered and they were covering the van. There's caterpillars already crawling all over the van tires. Like, are they gonna get in tonight? <laughs> the question is, do we have hammocking trees? Over by the river, there actually are trees that we can hammock at. And I think I might bring a book and relax. Let's go. <sighs> You really can't go wrong with any of these campsites. The campground itself is just so beautiful. It's beautiful. You get all of this right next to the campground. It took us not even two minutes to walk over here. On the other side of this is Georgia. So this is actually the most northern spot on the Florida's east coast before you hit Georgia. Behind us, there's an entire parking lot right next to the water. I mean, I would even be tempted to call to do this. Take two. <laughs> We're gonna go get the band. Bye, campsite. What do you think of that spot? I think now we've arrived. That was so cool. We just had this couple come up to us and they're just kind of looking like, I really like the van and we were getting to talk in and she actually recognized my voice. <laughs> what do you think? Is Paul recognizable? Oh my god, there's a dolphin! And he came up and he was going to the right towards that jet ski. There's a lot of boats out here. We've seen two really big sailboats, some jet skis, some fishermen right behind us. Fort Clinch also holds a very special place in our hearts because 13 years ago, on a camping trip, our friends took our wedding engagement photos here with so much beauty around us and doing exactly what we love most. That feels really nice. There is actually no swimming here. Because of the current, it's an inlet, so it goes really fast. But you can take a paddleboard out. It's so fun to meet more of you guys and meeting fellow adventurers that love the same thing. Hiking, mm -hmm. camping, biking, all the good stuff. <laughs> Guess what? What? I see a cool shell. Ooh, right there. Go get it. Right. Oh, that one. Oh 
watching dolphins. They're all in there. A little more? Give me more slack. Whoa! <laughs> I think I need my own. Much better. Soak it up the sun. Ay, 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 ay. Stayed for as long as we could. But I'm starting to get some noceums. Time to go. Ugh. We have to walk all the way back. Oh. No bugs. Dinner time. We got rice, onion, bell pepper, celery, and a purple carrot. Ooh. It turned out good. Look at that. Up. Whoa. That's really good. I like the coconut. Good night. Good night. First thing in the morning, we walk to the river to look for something very specific. The Fernandina Beach area is known for being a great place to find shark teeth. And since it's low tide, we thought we'd try our luck. I found one. My first shark tooth ever. It's sharp. Ooh. I might have found one. I think it's a tooth. I don't know if it's a shark tooth. I found something. Oh my gosh, first time shark tooth hunting and we found one. I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. The dolphins are really, really close. Oh, I see them. Wow, they were right here. <laughs> he jumped up and flipped his tail. That was so cool. I read the instructions wrong. It's yummy, thank you. Today we're having pancakes. King Arthur's flour, baking powder, very important. And I brought cinnamon we can put on top too. I'll put a smidgen of salt and some milk, and that's it. I'd say to come over if you were in the next campsite over, but you're here with us now. Just gonna mix just enough where it's kind of still lumpy. And that's the trick to getting these pancakes to still fluff up. We just have this little one burner camp stove and I think that's actually a plus because in the summertime when you're cooking the van, it is hot. That little puffball bird this morning is right above our van on the wire. Oh, that smells good. The plan today, originally... We were supposed to get up and watch the sunrise. We were gonna go take the bicycles, but... We went to bed pretty late. <laughs> but it was so nice though. So if we had gone to go see the sunrise, it started pouring down rain and yeah. we can hear it like trickling on the van. It's blue sky, I don't know where it came from, but for like a half hour, it rained pretty good this morning and we would have been on our bikes at that time. We're heading to the fort. 
typically we would have taken the bicycles over there but since we are actually um, checking out today we're taking the van this is gonna be a nice day Yay! it's fairly hot outside Ooh, hot but thankfully a little cloudy on to Fort Clinch Fort Clinch is still two dollars fifty cents per person to get in thank, thank you, you. Have a great day, this fort is so cool. I'm learning. The Spanish-American War and Fort Clinch. Oh, I see, there's the man himself. General Clinch. And we have a map that actually shows us all the different places, so in case we don't know what they are, we'll be able to look at the map. Yeah. That's a pretty cool entrance. We are stepping into the past. The year is 1864 and the Civil War is in progress. Look at this, this is like on The Walking Dead, for real. I have to say this feels like the most grand entrance to a fort we've visited so far. And it's a little bit intimidating even. You can just imagine what it would feel like during wartime. There's cannons right up top and everything. There's a lot of history at Fort Clinch. It's been around for well over 100 years. That is solid. This is a cool tunnel. We hope to really feel what it was like to live here as a soldier. We're like inside this little fort with individual buildings and each of these has a different purpose. It looks like nothing has changed in a hundred years. And the reenactments make us feel like we're eavesdropping on a moment in time long ago. Even this merchant shop felt real, like we had traveled in time. These are actually things for sale? I thought it was just... So for show, I don't know. We're trying to raise money for a case on for the fort oh. so we can have some more artillery stuff out there. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh yeah, that's, that's definitely gingerbread. Well done, <laughs> well done. Time out. You're probably wondering what's going on here. One, who is this guy? Two, what are we drinking? And three, <laughs> why are we so excited about all of this? So, cats out of the bag. No cats were harmed in the making of this video. We have another YouTube channel. Welcome back to the fermentation adventure. Hey! hey! We really wanted to help others ferment. So, on that channel, we share our adventures in fermentation, like how to make homemade ginger ale, homemade kombucha, and even sauerkraut. So to answer the questions. This is Gary. He's been watching our fermentation videos and now makes his own fermented drinks. We're drinking Gary's homemade fermented cranberry soda and it's delicious. So you guys will never believe this. We're just around here doing a, a video for our adventure channel and somebody actually watches our uh, fermentation adventure. Me, Gary. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's always fun to meet a fellow fermenter. Fermentation must have happened here long ago, back before refrigeration. And now fermentation is happening again at this historic fort. Oh yeah, that's, that's definitely gingerbread. Well done, <laughs> well done. <laughs> well, <laughs> cheers to you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for you adding the fort clinch, oh, the, the next yeah. uh, element that uh, happened here. Yeah, and absolutely. And you oh. gave life to it, so thank you. Thank you, thanks, this is awesome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now back to the fort. And a little hat. So amazing. I was not prepared to meet somebody like Gary, and he is quite the traveler. So they are raising money for the fort, and we have these from Nepal. They are made of yak wool, and this is from Afghanistan. Really, really incredible. And he's a fermenter just like us. These are going in the van. Yes, definitely. Oh, it kind of has that like, wow. Like yaki. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get a special tour of the bakery that people don't usually get to see, so you get an inside look. <laughs> so they actually bake bread here. Stir the fire and you let it burn pretty hot for a long time. Yeah. 
And then when it cools down, you push the ashes aside, but the bricks stay warm. So you get, uh, you burn for about uh, four or five hours, you get like seven hours worth of uh, bacon. Wow. I think that would make some amazing pizza too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do here is the, the daily life of the soldier, how they live, how they work. And it, this is this was like a home to them. It wasn't just a face, they, they lived here. Yeah. So they did things to make things like home and everything they do was what you did at home without modern technology. Exactly. Each other, how they can, can do it. Like fermentation. Uh, fermentation, <laughs> right. exactly, which they used a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It was great to meet you. It was really good was to meet you all. Amazing. Really was. All right, you ready to explore? I am. Wow, could you imagine living here? Even though Fort Clinch was a military post in multiple wars, it was actually never used in direct combat. It was never fully completed either. There were starts and stops of construction throughout the years, and it ended up becoming one of Florida's first state parks in 1935. Just the architecture with the bricks. It's amazing how they do the arches. Wow, look at that. The vaulted ceilings. to see a view. There are multiple staircases across the fort that lead to sweeping views of the inside of the fort, the cannons, and the river, and lots of secluded walkways leading to interesting finds. I found the pretty. Huh? A spider crawled into the bricks. So yeah. can you imagine back in the day sitting on this and there's spiders. Ooh. Another beautiful view. Whoa. The views are amazing from this fort and all around you can see the views of the beach. And there's a ton of people and they're not just enjoying, it looks like they're looking for something. We're pretty sure they're all looking for shark teeth. You can park right next to the beach at Fort Clinch. The beachside loop just be aware that it is actually all in the sun and not very much shade, but you do get to be near the beach. And even the tent spots are really in the sun. It's finally time to visit the beach here at the park. With the luck we had this morning finding the shark tooth, we were hoping to spot another one. This is it. This is the beach. There are so many shells up there. We looked and looked, but couldn't seem to find any more shark teeth. But we were just so happy to find one this morning. So I had a classic YouTuber fail. So the deer was right in front of us and I thought I was filming and I was not filming. So we're going to the end of the riverside. <laughs> oh, amazing. wait a minute. It what? says area closed. <gasps> what happened? I didn't put the top on. <laughs> It's in my shoe. <laughs> so would you? <laughs> Hopefully you guys got it faster than I did. In our next episode, wait, Florida has caves? Yep, we're going Whoa. underground to explore the winding tunnels of a colorful cave. <laughs> oh, so cool. See you then.